Hello everyone, my name is Sophie Hen and I am an author and an illustrator and I am super excited to be here at Waterstones to talk to you about my brand new book which is coming out in August the 6th. It's so new I don't even have a whole book yet but I do have a cover to show you and this is that cover in all its shiny glory and it's called Pizzazz. It's not easy being super. And now I'm going to exclusively read the first chapter for the very first time and I really hope you enjoy it. Chapter one, the bit about me. Okay, well, I am nine and a quarter, almost nine and a half, and my name is Pizzazz. Yes, you did hear that right. My name is Pizzazz. And yes, it is completely embarrassing. And no, I don't think it's a proper name either. But as with most things around here, it really doesn't seem to matter what I think about it. With a ridiculous name like Pizzazz, I should probably be a magician or a pop star or a really smelly perfume. But I'm not any of those things. What I actually am is super. Not super as in brilliant or terrific or even very good. I am super super. Actually super. As in superhero with powers and stuff. Because of this, I have to wear a costume. And part of that costume is a very annoying cape. It gets in the way, flapping around my feet and trailing in puddles and getting stuck indoors, but I still have to wear it all the time, not just when it's cold. And my ridiculous name, which in case you hadn't already guessed, I hate, is written right across the back of my cape in huge shiny letters. Super. I come from a family of superheroes, which is generally how it works. Not always. I mean, there's the occasional freak accident in a scientist lab or a weird weather insect reclusive millionaire incident that ends up with a perfectly normal person being able to climb glass buildings or make lightning or jump really, really, really high or suddenly talk in a low gravelly voice. But mainly you're just born and find yourself in a family of superheroes and you can fly and stuff. And then if you're like me, you might find yourself wondering why you don't feel quite as delighted about this as the rest of your family does. The most annoying person in my family is definitely my little sister. She's like a superhero, crossed with a cheerleader, crossed with someone who is completely good at everything. Oh, and did I mention she's really happy all the time? Well, she is. Also, unlike me, she got a cool superhero name, Red Dragon which is just another of the many reasons I know my parents prefer her to me. I call her Red for short, because Red Dragon is quite a mouthful to say if you just want someone to pass the TV remote or get a snack or even go away. But she's absolutely not allowed to call me Piz. If I'm feeling generous, she can call me Zaz, but she's never really sure when I'm feeling generous. And if I'm honest, neither am I. So she tends to just call me Pizzazz. With a name like Red Dragon, obviously her superpower is that she can breathe fire, which is really useful, not just for defeating baddies, but at barbecues too, and for birthday cakes. She's also got super speed, which is okay, I suppose. They are all way cooler than my superpower, which is the least cool of all the superpowers, and in fact so uncool that sometimes I even consider letting the baddies win so I don't actually have to use it. Yes, it's that embarrassing. Anyway, I cannot even talk about it right now. It's all just so unfair. My parents were sort of super famous about a million years ago because they've saved the world about a trillion times. But these days, they just make me and Red do everything. Neutralise rockets, realign planets, load the dishwasher. It's like we're their personal servants or something. And if you think it's hard to have your mum and dad cheering you on from the sidelines at sports day, try having them cheer you on while you and your irritating little sister divert a planet-sized meteor that's on direct collision course with Earth. Yup, no pressure. And unlucky for me, it's not just my immediate family that's completely weird. Oh no, it's my entire family. There's Gramps, Gran, Uncle Teaser, Uncle Titano, yes there are that many O's, Grandmother, Auntie Blaze and Auntie Fury, only we don't talk about her that much. Also we have a dog, she's not exactly a pet dog but more like a total bossy boots who happens to have four legs, a tail, flappy ears and can't resist running after anything you throw. 
We call her Wanda because that's her name. And she came to us from Mission Control, who are basically in charge of which super goes where, saves what and when. So instead of having an actual phone to talk to Mission Control, like normal, sensible people, we have a dog who receives and transmits messages and generally keeps an eye on us. Although totally embarrassing and completely weird, this does actually work out okay most of the time. Though Wanda is absolutely not allowed to go on any missions anymore. This is because Dad threw one of the bomb's super scratchy itching powder bombs into outer space just before it exploded. But Wanda zoomed off and fetched it right back, just in time for it to explode and make us all itch forever. Well, not quite forever, but at least a month. We also have two guinea pigs. Well, I have one and my sister has the other. They are actual pets and don't do anything other than the usual guinea pig stuff, but they're still super, just normal super, like great. My guinea pig is called Bernard. I named it before I knew it was a girl, but it's still really suited her and I think she likes it, so I stuck with it. My sister's guinea pig is called Rocket and is actually just as annoying as she is. They're both always dashing off, achieving stuff and basically showing off. Bernard is more laid back like me. We both like to sleep a lot and eat a lot too. And we have the same favourite snack, prawn cocktail crisps. Nice. Most people seem to think that being a superhero must be completely brilliant. They're actually very wrong. You have probably guessed I'm not particularly thrilled with being super, but there are a few good things about it. Just a few. Things that are super. One, flying. Obviously, that is a great thing. I mean, flying. But not all superheroes can fly, i.e. my little sister. Ha, ha, ha. Two, having a whole family of superheroes who are watching out for you. Well, I say a whole family, but there is my auntie Sarah and she's not actually a superhero. Well, not in the usual sense, though my mum says she should have a medal for putting up with my uncle Teaser. And she has a point. And then there's my Auntie Fury, who I'm not supposed to talk about, as she is now a baddie. Shh. Three, you get superpowers, which normally is a great thing, especially if your power is like super speed or super strength or laser eyes. But if you're me and have the worst, most awful, embarrassing superpower in the universe, then it definitely belongs on the next list. Things that are not so super. There are way more rubbish things about being a superhero, at least I think so. One, school. Even though I am a superhero, whizzing around saving a world or a town or a kitten from almost certain doom, I still have to go to school, which seems a bit much to me. Mum is always blah, blah, blahing about how it's important to have something to fall back on, just in case all the baddies decide to turn over a new leaf. As if. As far as I can work out, no matter how many baddies get defeated, there are just a million more queuing up behind them to cause havoc with their fancy laser blasters and snazzy stink bomb makers. Two, you have to wear the same outfit the whole time. Well, we have lots of spares of the same outfit. I mean, we're not gross, apart from Fartarella. She really is gross. But other than that, we're actually fairly hygienic. Three, you are always disappearing off to save all of mankind. One minute you are about to choose a delicious ice cream. Will it be chocolate chocolate chip or banana chocolate chip or toffee chocolate chip? And the next minute you're zooming off on a mission. It can really get in the way of stuff and not just delicious ice creams. Here are some examples of how, just how annoying it can be. Example one, you are just getting into a really good book at the part where you have to know what happens. Then all of a sudden, emergency, mission, go, go, go. A proper bad baddie storms the city with his evil robot army and you have to scarper over there double fast to stop him and then you lose your page. Ah. Example two, an extremely evil mastermind is trying to colonise an innocent planet in outer space. But you've just started dinner and it's not just any old dinner, but your favourite dinner. Mine is pizza or baked potatoes, but mainly pizza. Anyway, you have to leave your dinner and go and save the innocent planet right away. And by the time you get back, your pizza is cold and curled up at the edges. Ew. And you have to have yoghurt and a banana because it's late and everyone's tired. 
Example three. A wicked genius has made a giant stink bomb and is threatening to explode it all over the Queen's birthday party. And instead of going bowling for your friend's birthday like you were supposed to, you in actual fact have to spend the whole afternoon thwarting the evil genius's wicked plans. And getting soaked in stink juice. Which takes three weeks to properly wash out. Pew. Four. All that disappearing makes it really hard to have friends. Despite this, I did actually have two of the best friends in the whole world, universe even, Tom and Susie, at my old school. They never ever got annoyed with me constantly disappearing, they never thought my cape was strange and they didn't even mind about the stink juice. I guess that's because I've known them my whole life and that's how things have always been. They were used to having a superhero best friend called Pizzazz. But now everything's changed because besides giving me the worst name ever and a stupid cape, my parents decided they needed to ruin my life a little bit more by making us move house. In fact, not just house, but to a whole new town, which is hard enough normally. But when you're a super weirdo like me, I'm certain it's even harder. There's just so much to explain all the time. Maybe I should just get it all printed on a t-shirt or a cape. Ha ha. And then there's five, you always have to be the goody, even when you don't feel like it. Six, the whole of Earth's existence depends upon you. Well, not just you, you and all the other superheroes, but sometimes just you if the others are busy with something else. And that can be quite a worry. Seven, you spend a lot of your time wishing you were normal. At least I do. And eight, your superpower is super embarrassing and super stupid and you super hate it. Well, that's the end of chapter one. I really hope you enjoyed it. And I really hope you enjoy all the other chapters when Pizzazz comes out on August the 6th. Bye.